Last year, Mr. Swaggles, Simple Shark, and I created the Immortals Progressive Tower, which had you climb through 20 increasingly difficult levels that proved to be quite a challenge for players of all ranks. And although we're all still very proud of that project, this year we wanted to go above and beyond the limits of anything we've seen in not only training maps, but custom Rocket League maps as a whole. We've partnered with Immortals and Progressive once again this year to bring you a sequel to the tower in a completely new open world format with quests, secrets, exploration, lore, you name it. I'm happy to introduce to you Immortals Progressive Island. We have poured our blood, sweat, and tears into this project over the last six months. With over 1,200 hours of game design, this map is an entire video game inside Rocket League, and it's now available for all of you to play on Steam and Epic Games. There's even $5,000 up for grabs for speedrunning this map, thanks to Immortals and Progressive, but I'll get to that in a second. The map opens up with a few cutscenes to set the objective. You're on a mission to collect samples from a distant planet. What's really cool about this scene is that it actually keeps track of your account, your name, and start time. This map also saves your progress using Bacchus Mod. So as you traverse through the open world, your level completion and discoveries will be saved for the next time you open the map. Anyway, with your ship crashing into the island, you'll need to find a way to repair and power back up your ship through a mysterious resource called P. You collect P by completing challenges. Speaking of challenges, there are 32 levels in this massive island, spread across 8 different zones. Each zone is based off a Rocket League rank, which features 4 unique challenges, made up of offense, defense, mechanic, and finally a movement course, which takes you from one zone to the next. There are also secrets spread across the entire island, along with side quests, and even lore. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let's take a look at the first zone. Starting off at the crash site, we've arrived in Bronzeville, which is a forest in the center of the island. The Bronze Mechanics Challenge is a zero boost platforming test, with five pieces to collect on platforms spread out. Keep an eye out for ways to skip platforms. The bronze offense challenge is quite simple with a ball spawning in front of every goal. Keep up your speed between shots to get a faster time. And if you miss any shots, the map will remember your previous best run. Simply try again and try to finish with all five Ps. As you can see here, the movement course requires 15p to move forward, which means you'll have to complete the other three levels first. The bronze defense challenge features cannons that fires the ball at you, and you'll have to clear the ball towards each target. Now finally the bronze movement course. It's a simple road that travels through the trees. We've designed all the movement courses with speedrun cuts in mind, so see what new paths you can discover. With the movement course complete, we've collected the 20 Ps for the area and move on to the next zone, the Silver Mine. I won't be showing you every level in the map because I think it's better that you experience the levels for yourself. But don't worry, I'll have the full playthrough of the map on the channel quite soon. Moving into Silver Mechanics, this level requires some carefully planned wave dashes and aerials with some pretty tight boost amounts. There's also an alternate path to make it easier for lower ranks. But that path isn't as fast. Keep in mind, don't be ashamed if you're a higher rank than silver but struggle on this level. These ranks aren't really supposed to perfectly match up with in-game ranks, but more so display a gradual increase in difficulty.
Silver offense introduces slight aerial shots, picking it up quite a bit from the bronze offense challenge. Silver defense provides ramps that allow you to close the gap on shots towards you. And once again, you clear the ball into each target to get all five Ps. To finish off the silver mine, we enter a level lower than the cave, into the fiery lava pits. The lava falls will demo you, so make sure you manage your boost and cut around the obstacles. We can now escape the mines and reach Gold Point, which features a shipwreck with progressive cargo spread along the beach. This will be the final zone that I show in full, but I hope this gives you a good idea of how to approach some levels in the future. Gold Mechanics introduces a slalom rings course, with inner rings that are smaller and give less boost, but provide a faster path to the finish. If you have a keen eye, you might notice a sneaky path to cut down your time on this level. The Gold Offense Challenge levels up your arrow game by increasing the pace and window of opportunity on your shots. This one might take a couple tries to get the hang of. We now introduce rolling balls towards your net and gold defense, which get harder and harder to save as you go through the course. Keeping a healthy boost count will make your life much easier at the end. With all three gold challenges out of the way, we're onto the movement course which takes us through the shipwreck and towards the next zone called the Platinarium. Bob and weave between crates and mine the gap between the roads.
Moving on to the Platinarium, the zones only get crazier from here, introducing new concepts like unlimited boost and follow through targets. In the future there are dribble courses, air dribbles, flicks, and so much more. Oh and before I forget, my favorite movement course is around the corner. The Platinum Movement Challenge takes you deep into the pipelines underground, and you'll have to find your way into the pipe on the other side. Of course you'll need to beat the other levels first, but this is where the map really starts to ramp up. Now I'm sure you're curious to see what the rest of the zones look like, so I'll quickly show you around. Next up we have Diamond Lake, which features floating challenge platforms along with a vibrant blue forest. Once you traverse the walls in the movement challenge, you'll make your way into Champ's Fields, a lavender field with a river flowing from the lake over to a waterfall. That waterfall leads right to a canyon, the second last zone for Grand Champion. There's one final zone for SSL above the mountain, but I think I'll leave that one a mystery. I will show you a level from SSL however, and it's a very tough rings course that requires using the ceiling to reach the end. It's a pretty fun level, but here's why I wanted to show you this challenge specifically. If you watch streamers who never saw this video, you get to point and laugh at them when they reach the end with no boost, because they can't reach the final P, so make sure you save at least 15 boost. I also wanted to show you a level that we ended up reworking, because it's insane. It's definitely too difficult for a speedrun challenge, so we made it a little easier in the final iteration. But you know what's even harder than that level? Hardcore mode, which I'm not sure anyone will beat for a long time. You have one life to go through all 32 levels. I'll definitely have a lot of fun racing my friends so you can get the furthest in hardcore. But speedrun mode is just as fun, allowing you to track your best times. Speedrun mode is also the mode we're using for the $5,000 prize pool. Here's the prize breakdown. There's a $1,000 prize for the fastest completion time after the first 24 hours of release, which means tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern is the cutoff point. The remaining $4,000 is for the top three times after a full month of release. It's split into $2,500, $1,000, and $500 for first, second, and third. You can submit your runs on speedrun.com IPI. Make sure to read up on the rules for submission. Whether you want to use the map to train, compete, or just mess around, we really hope you guys enjoy this open world concept. You can find the map on Steam Workshop or my website lethemir.com. This project has taken up so much of my time behind the scenes, but it was well worth it. A huge thanks to Immortals and Progressive for making this possible by sponsoring this map. Until next time, have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.